Great. So first we'll start with um, our land acknowledgement. The Clay Studio is situated on Lenape Hawking, the ancestral and spiritual homeland of the Lenape. Their unbroken relationship to this land has survived forced removal and diaspora. We recognize their work as caretakers and creators, and we commit to learning from Lenape culture and providing a space for their perspectives in our work. So now I'd like to introduce Kyun, Kyun Ming Park and Jun Hee Kim. First, Kyun Ming Park is a figurative sculptor, ceramic sculptor, drawing inspiration from childlike perspectives, contrasting the darker emotions and restricted psyche of adulthood with the boundless consciousness of children. Kyun Ming's sculptures confront the viewer with uncomfortable juxtapositions, encouraging reflection upon personal expectations and narratives. Kyun Ming largely uses hand building techniques to construct her figures out of porcelain, a material she prefers for its ability to contrast starkly with bright and colorful decoration. Originally from South Korea, Kyun Ming earned her MFA in ceramics from the University of Georgia in 2012 and her BFA from the New York State College of Ceramics and Alfred in 2008. Currently, Kyun Ming is an associate professor of 3D studio art at Endicott College in Beverly, Massachusetts. Park was a long-term resident artist at the Archie Bray Foundation in Helena, Montana, has won okay. multiple awards. Here, my picture. Uh oh. Put you back on. Oh, you're Just, um, if everyone could make sure they they stay on mute, that would be great. Thank you. Um, and was the 2016 Emerging Artist at Ensika, among many other awards. Um, also, Kyun Ming has exhibited both nationally and internationally at Aqua Art Miami Basel. Um, Sofa Chicago, the Clay Studio in Philadelphia, Scripps College, Claremont, California, Penland School of Crafts, um, the Fuller Craft Museum, the Museum of Contemporary Art of Georgia, um, the Belger Art Center, Duane Reen, Eutectic, Lill Street, Morian Art Center, Signature Galleries, and many, many others. Welcome, Ken Ming. That was the abbreviated version, everyone. Go on her website to, to read all of the many awards. You, <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, congratulations, June Hee Kim. June Hee Kim's work explores the significant perception of existing as a human being while examining and re reconciling the diverse identities and heritage of the world, seeking out the compelling forces of beauty and desire. An award-winning ceramic artist who has an art, who was an art director in her native South Korea. She came to Canada and took patisserie studies at Le Cordon Bleu in Ottawa. However, switching careers and graduating from Sheridan College led her to become intrigued with ceramics. As the Cecil Lewis Sculpture Scholarship recipient, she completed a master's in fine art at Chelsea College of Arts in the UK. Her compelling ceramic works have been exhibited in the US, Germany, UK, and have also been in solo exhibition at the Clay and Glass Gallery in Canada. She examines her heritage through the lenses of multiple influences as she travels to both national and international artist residencies. Following the Banff Clay Revival Residency, she was one of six selected artists for the Canadian Craft Biennial, then attended the Shigaraki Ceramic Cultural Park Residence in Japan, Ceramic Center Residency in Berlin, and most recently, the Archie Bray Foundation Residency in Montana. She was also a recipient of many awards. Um, including the Helen Copeland Memorial Award for six consecutive years from the Craft Ontario Council, amazing. A numerous amount of grants from um, Canada Council of the Arts and Ontario Arts Council, um, Best of Craft and Design at the Toronto Outdoor Fair. And her latest achievement derives from her work being chosen through numerous selections for the Royal Botanical Gardens International Sculpture Collection. Congratulations to you both. Um, I'm going to start with our standard question, which is, what made you, how did you um, make the brave decision to make your life in art? Since I introduced Ken Ming first, I think we'll ask Junhee first to start. We're going to switch. So your brave decision. Mm -hmm. So as someone naturally born with a curiosity, I enjoy encountering and experiencing new things. So I started my career as a graphic designer, then worked as an art director for 10 years in South Korea. 
like many other designers, uh, my desire was to go beyond the work of 2D and broaden the work that I do. So just a little um, hobby, the pastry studies that begins as a hobby became a person of my new profession. And I attend Le Cordon Bleu in Ottawa, Canada to complete a specialized program to start my new career as a pastry chef. But <laughs> on one very hot day, uh, it was very unexpectedly. I had a chance to visit the ceramic studio Sheridan College in Oakville, Ontario. And then after the visit, my heart was captivated by these ceramics and works and everything. And I realized that my deep desire is to study ceramics since then. And I still believe that the pastry study that I had that ignites my passion to challenge myself to ceramic world. So to make pastry goods or to make uh, ceramic pieces, the settings are very similar. So when you go to the kitchen or glaze lab in the ceramic studios, you use almost the same tools like spatulas, whisks, sieve and scales and glaze recipes. And also you can use some of the dry ingredient, add some water, mix the batter, you fold it, you shape it, and then you glaze it. And finally you put them into the oven or kiln to fire or bake it. So everything just to look alike to me. And then it was kind of big challenging to me. So starting something brand new, at the period of my life was a major turning uh, point. Mm -hmm. So since then, I'm very much feeling a great sense of fulfillment and gratefulness. So the curiosity meets destiny, then that becomes me. <laughs> yeah. Curiosity meets destiny. That's mm -hmm. great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, I already had a one <laughs> in conversation so I don't want to repeat too much and then if you were here before I'm there's sorry to yeah. hear it um there's new people it's okay yeah <laughs> I was born in South Korea um and having Asian parents and then being a girl means they're gonna do everything for you they're all into education, which I really appreciate it now that as a girl, I was doing so many things. Like, I think they were really trying to find me what I'm interested in. So they want me to explore a lot of stuff. So of course I was in uh, ballet, Korean dance. I was doing um, art classes. I was playing violin because my mom is a violinist. And then they also put me in, you know, play like chess, like it's play go in South Korea called mm -hmm. Paduk. I was even playing, playing go. I was pretty good at it, I think. Um, and I was playing violin, was focused on because my mom knew how to do it. So age until age three to 12, I was playing violin. So everybody thought that I was going to uh, pursue the music degree. But then uh, 12 years old me, I knew it, that that's not my way of speaking. I wanted to making art because that was making much more sense. I was like stay up late until three in the morning drawing and painting but playing violin playing piano I'll fall asleep right away mm -hmm. so I, age 12 I knew it and then I told my mom that this is what I want to do and then I pursue from then um I wish I envy somehow Junhee's you know uh way of finding your uh, passion in the later and explore different things but I knew it too early that I just like was really focused on one thing for a long time. But then I went to art college when I was 12, uh, not art college, sorry, art high school first. And then I was experiencing so many different materials and clay was making much more sense to me. It was the medium that made most sense. So uh, I choose to go to college in ceramics major. So 2004, I started to work in, in clay. And 
the reason was that I guess I wanted to make a creature that looks like me and then um, you know show the body gesture as how I would do and just making my own people and own narrative I think that's why I mainly pick clay to be my medium but then I still was uh, looking for something else like I, I I think I always like set up a goal and then work towards to that goal and then when I meet that goal then I'll set up another one <laughs> so one of the thing was to like go to college and pursue the degree and then once I got there I wanted to like do something more so I starting to learning English and then eventually one of my professor at South Korea was American so she suggested me like why don't you go explore different art education system in America that's when I decided to transfer to America that's 18 years ago and I'm still here <laughs> um thank you I I think it's interesting that you said that you wanted to make I mean everything you said was interesting but one of the things um you wanted to make a creature that looked like you is that what you said yeah, look like us. Yeah, I was so into clay animation, and I loved it. Uh, instead of just like two D animations setting, the difference was that the cre like they were made by the hands, and then they're three D. They move like us, and some of them are. It's just like making a, your own narrative with your from your hand with your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just that was just interesting yeah I remember when I was like it was same thing like when I was 12 a lot of things happened I got very sick one day I remember like very sick I think I ate too much beef one day and then I got just so sick <laughs> so I stay in bed for like whole night and I couldn't even get up for like glass of water and I just like rolled around bored and then I found a box of this little rubber clay and I start making little tiny creatures and then putting next to my, you know, bed and just kind of playing with it. And that's the time that I knew that like, oh, I can create my own story. I can create my own creatures that I can, you know. You're creating your own world, really. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because both of you are still very much making figurative work, you know. So maybe June He, you can respond to that same idea. Mm -hmm. you, there are so many faces in mm -hmm. your, um, people walk into the exhibition and they say, oh, there's so many faces looking at me because yeah. a lot of the work um, is figurative. So can you talk a little bit about why it is that you're making faces and images of, of people? Uh, I think it's pretty natural way to find yourself. It's like uh, when you see a mirror, you see yourselves very well. And when you try to mimic yourself through this medium, and then it always, uh, there is a difference between the one and from the real self of your images. So always try to like, to me, clay is kind of like mirror that I can really uh, put myself into it, but it's really hard to put myself into it in other hands. So it's always challenging process, but also it's so natural way to express yours. So it's pretty, I think it's pretty natural, but when I see the openings of the show, I was very surprised that I had met like so many faces and the figurative works. So I guess there is something, yeah, maybe yeah. Korean, yeah, wants to show or express that kind of feeling into the clay, I guess. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think I, about that, Kinming? I also have to say this, that I was so glad that I was a fig making figurative work mm. when I came to America, because when I came to America, I was 20 years old, Sure, I studied English, but it was not perfect. It was totally broken. Um, and then because I was making figures that looks like me, as just Junie said, like I could tell my story. I could put my images through it, that it worked in sense of another language. 
that I can tell my story through my work easier than um, I think uh, if I was just making an object or some functional work. Um, I don't know when I found myself making work that looks like me, but Juni is right. We always looking at ourselves through the mirror and then we're so familiar with this image. So, and we always, we were making self-portrait, right, in a way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think this is the best way to tell the story. But yeah. I don't know if Juni is the same way, but when I start making figurative work, a lot of time it was look more like me, my my self-image mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. But then it evolves and it changes to something else. Now you can see like some other people influence into your work. And the images are changing and um mm -hmm. and then if you really look at figurative artists work a lot of time i found out that their work is very similar to their <laughs> their own image mm -hmm. yeah i totally then, agree so first i try to look at myself and mimic what am i look like but then people often said to me that Ginny, your work doesn't look like Korean at all because you got like very pointy nose and then big eyes. It's not like Asian face look like. But I can say that it's just a, not me, but I want to say it's us. So including me and the people around me because I every day I just to meet and look at others' face also, people that I meet every day. So that reflects also on my work too. So it's like totally not the same as Luke as as I am, but like it's all different and have having diversity in it. Yeah. Somebody had a question? Um, no, it's somebody's cell phone. <laughs> um if anyone does have questions, please put your hand up or Put something in the chat. That's totally fine. Um, I'd love to switch gears and have each of you just present your few images to talk about your your own work. Um, and then I'm going to ask you about the work specifically that's in the exhibition. So how about if Kinmin goes first? Because June, he went first last time. Perfect. Can everybody see? OK, I'm going to this down. Yeah. Looks good. All right. All okay, right, I'm gonna introduce myself again. There's uh, Patrick is coming in. Perfect oh, time. Yeah. All right. Okay, so hi, Kelmin Park, and thanks for the lovely image. This is from the exhibition. I loved it when I received it. I'm like, oh my God, who took this picture? I need to do a better job on taking pictures of my work. Uh, <laughs> that was our graphic designer, Emily. So I'll tell her you said that. I was very happy when Jennifer asked me to be in this show uh, right after the figuring space. Um, and uh, I've been very lucky. I'm really, really lucky, Jennifer, to you to including me for many shows th throughout the years. And it's my honor to show my work in such institution. Um, and this was very meaningful. I was actually tearing up when Songu was mentioning that this was dreaming come true, that we talked about it a lot, about having an exhibition with a bunch of artists, Korean artists um, included. So this was also our dream come true. There's many of us working really hard and trying to survive in a different country and it's we all know that it's very difficult but we all doing great and I'm just so happy to see many of resident artists at <laughs> the clay studio <laughs> their fellow Koreans uh let's see oops oops okay so when I was got invited uh to have a show at Between Horizons I normally think about the theme what can I do what kind of stories I can talk about it um to carry the curators you know thoughts and their purpose for this exhibition um and then having meetings with Jennifer and another uh, uh, oh my god Young Lee Young yeah Mi Kyung Lee <laughs> Mi Kyung was also like 
just like me like just especially sharing a story with Migyoung I oh I've always felt like she already knew that what my life is going to be like because <laughs> she already <laughs> lived in America did this very similar thing and went through very similar thing that I went through or going to so I was just like wow like I asked her personal information so I can keep a contact with her <laughs> so that was very nice um and then I was so sure that we all are going to probably tell very similar story living in America as a foreigner and to me um and just looking it back like what who I am uh who I am as a Korean and also now I'm a green card holder so legally uh legal resident in America what it is you know but then I always tell myself it's so weird like I was always Korean I'm still am Korean living in America but if I go home I'm like in between her I'm Korean but I'm also like living in America so I cannot be a full Korean to uh, my Korean friends and family <laughs> so it's like in between her but I think I just wanted to create a work that captured that moment of me uh still being Korean very Korean but like stepping into the new chapter in my life living in America um so looking it back <laughs> This is me uh, at my first year birthday. So when the baby turned uh, one year in South Korea, they threw a huge party. Uh, this started from the tradition that, you know, back in the days, it was very hard for babies to survive even first year. So they threw a big party for first year birthday. And then we all, all are going to put little, you know, dresses called hanbok and then like, uh, bunch of traditional food and celebration this is me and my mom my mom and my dad and me I do not look like my mom I do look like my dad <laughs> just one downside of it but um yeah so this is like very known image if you are born in Korea like like huge celebration just like having a you know uh your kid survived went through the first year so I wanted to create that image like the most celebrate time of your life, first year birthday. So then I looked through some Korean traditional dresses of what the girls will wear it. So I did some little like a uh, research on like what is the most traditional color pattern, most traditional like um style it is. So then I came into America January to upstate New York and Alfred so I wanted to carry that so if there is also the winter costume different hats different um vest and stuff so I also went over to a little research that what would be like in the winter season but then I was actually teaching a workshop at Aramont this time um whenever I'm making a work I can always have an image and draw, like have a little sketch. And then I'll create small little maquette to just see like 3D sketch. So um, this is what I did. So I will create a little tiny like sculpture and then, you know, do a little quick sketch. This will take like, I don't know, like 15 minutes to do it. Then I can visually see it better. But then I will move on and then create this, you know, the scale that I wanted to. So this time I used, I've been using Laguna V Mix to make sculptures. It just holds it well and it has character of both porcelain and also stoneware. So if I have to build something quick, this is the clay to go. Um, so as you see it in my studio, which is in Boston right now, I live in uh, artist live and workplace. So this is my living space, but also studio space. And then I have like three TV, one for living room, one for bedroom and one for studio. <laughs> so I can still watch TV, but at the same time I can have pull up the reference image while I'm working. So this is what I will do. So um, this is just like one of the process shot. And then um, once I have a mate, 
main figure up, um, I will create a little uh, storytelling, like narrative, right? Little tiny objects that goes with the figure. As you see it, I created my dog, AJ, little dachshund, 14 years old. And then um, I will just create another uh, object, which was a luggage to tell another story. Oh, uh, and of course, painting was a very important part of this. I thought the handbook has a, amazing like color patterns and little stitches that um, adding a details on. So I spent good time on like painting it. My eyeball was just like so tired. Uh, <laughs> luckily, it's, until now, I don't have to wear glasses, knock on wood. Um, but it's very tiring practice like uh, process, like underglazing and uh, coloring. But a lot of time, often time, I also speak to my students that like we spent so much time to making it, but we didn't really take our time to coloring it and finishing mm. up, finishing it up. But I think that makes a huge difference. Mm. So I tend to spend good amount, like almost same time um, of coloring and color choice, like even making color choices and which color goes where. Um, and then I try my best to even like equal out that time as well. And thanks to Amico, <laughs> Gosh, without their help, I don't know how am I going to do this. Um, so this is actually after the first fire, uh, second firing. Yeah. So I did, I did use Amico's velvet, and also uh, what's another underglaze uh velvet and lug 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 under glazes and i use a lot of their matte glazes so for example the the red dress was they're just matte glaze matte red that works perfectly um it's, i mean of course it varies by what kind of clay body do you use does this work with your clay body I did a lot of tests, you know, made a lot of test tiles before I do this. So I knew which color will be turned out at the end. So this was my uh, glaze firing, but then I wanted to add a little bit of detail, you know, of our traditional hanbok. I don't, I, but I wanted to also give a little tweak to it. So uh, I got some gold uh, luster, not, uh, what do you call it? Decals. Decals. <laughs> I'm just like, can't even think of it decals and then I put some patterns that you know mean something to me there was January lots of snow so I got some snow patterns and I got some lettering and then um, of course America so I gotta have a lot of tons of stars um, and then the letter if you really look close enough it will say Korean yeah. in America um, so that's what I did uh, and this is the final images that I took in my uh, studio. So, um, yeah, it's a little girl with a little dog <laughs> walking with the little luggage next to it. But I'm going to explain to you a little detail about what that means. So in Korean traditional dress, uh, you see it. There are a lot of colors. Um, there's a patterns of which color goes where. Uh, but also there is a little tiny... Um, that butterfly decoration is called norige. So that this accessory that goes with the hanbok. Um, and then it's for good luck, you know, brings uh, uh, lucks to you, you know, eternal youth. I didn't know about that. It's what Wikipedia told me. <laughs> but then in the luggage that I am dragging, my dad said it. Uh, he said, when you left the country to go to America, you had a two luggage in your hand. And at the airport, I just said, bye, dad. And I didn't even cry. I didn't even sad about it. And then he just keep mentioning that. You didn't even give me a hug. You're just so happy that you're leaving and start over. So whenever I'm thinking about like that moment of leaving from America to like from Korea to America, I think about myself with big smile with two luggages. So I had to make a luggage that go with the, her and then inside of the luggage, I wanted to create what I came with, what I brought it to to America. So I was studying ceramics in South Korea. So I wanted to create a work that represent that. So I put some brushes and I put that white porcelain that known in my country. And of course, we cannot forget kimchi because I'm Korean, you know, 
So <laughs> that's C3 images that I put it into the luggage and of course our flag. So this is the work and description about the work. Um, I know we're running out of time, so I probably will not read this, but I know that it's up on our website. So, but yeah, this was basically depicting my image as a Korean girl coming into a new country. Um, and then briefly talking about it, this was another work that I show it um, next to uh, the work that I just explained to you. This one was made a um, few years back, but titled Hello, My Name is Gina Park. So basically, I don't know if the Juni is the same way, but Juni is easier to pronounce, but Kyungmin was very hard to pronounce to Ameri Americans when I came here in 2006. So I was asked a lot of time if I have any westernized name. These days, they don't. People don't ask me that question ever again, but it, I, it used to. My professor's asking me, like, if you have another name, then Kyungmin Park is too hard to pronounce. So I gave some people my confirmation name. I'm a Catholic, which is Gina. So some people call me Gina Park, but I will never like answer to that name. But uh, it was it was about that. So there's a two pieces in the show right now. If you saw it, thank you for coming to visit our exhibition. If you haven't, it will be up still end of November. I mean December. So thank you for having me in the show. I'm so grateful to showing my work alongside with many of talented Korean artists. Thank you. Thanks, Ken Meng. Thank you. Um, excellent. Yay. Okay. Junhee, would you mm. like to share with us about your work? Yes. <laughs> Can you guys see everything here? Yep. Okay. So it's going to be, uh, lots of images, but I'll be quick. <laughs> So um, I started ceramic in my late 30s, which is, to me, I feel like it's very late stage of my life to study ceramics. But I'm most interested in history, like art and craft and culture. And one day I discovered how uh, Japanese porcelain evolved and spread out to Europe in 16th centuries. And the very first person who found a Japanese porcelain mine was the a Korean potter, and his name was Lee Sangpyeong. And he was a potter and captured by Japanese and taken to Japan during the war. And I was motivated by these findings. So later, later, after finishing my MA, Fine Art Studies in UK, I decided to go to Japan for Shigaraki Artist in Residencies. I researched the porcelain footages in a specific period. And I also visited like important uh, places where the Arita porcelain uh, birthplace, Arita and Imari in Saga, Japan. So as you can see the photos there, piles of porcelain rock from porcelain mine in Arita. Just the corner of the street, you can find piles, piles of porcelain easily. And then I also paid a visit to the monument of Li Sangpyeong, who was the pioneer of Arita porcelain. And this kind of finding, uh, I was considering my background as a someone uh, Korean descent. So there I actually touched the porcelain and make a pair of vessels, attach the elements, uh, coins that represent the place, their patterns and inspiration, historical fact and cultures to think about who I am and my new identity. My work captures a humanity in its true form and they are the, they become the reconstruction of the new identity in the world. And I believe that so human body 
is seen as a vessel that holds language, lineage, and memories, and all the archive. So during the time there, I met the sculptures exhibited in the Shigaraki Sculptural Park, and with the support of Canada Council of Art, I was able to ship them back and exhibit them at the uh, Art Gallery of Burlington in Ontario, Canada. So when I go to the artist in residences for each time I work on build my series. And this is one of the pieces of the series and now featured in the exhibition Between Horizons. So I built those pieces of cultural inspirations and influences into a form of totem and composing element and the different are the different depending on where I am. So I have like series of the work there. And uh, I often made a mold from the found object from the places, add some element like the coins and buttons and recycled containers, sometimes um, some motif from historical buildings and using the local clay from the area there. So the memories and stories from the places are naturally contained in the piece. And it offers me a sanctuary to explore my creative pursuit. So the safer, I called it, this is very sacred practice to me, is more than just a artistic expression, but it contains um, traces and memories of a specific era representing uh, the real life tapestry of a human experience. So the processes of constructing a totem is an embodiment of human connections and introspection. So the last year, from the last year, all these art pieces were invited for the International Ceramic Art Fair at the Garden Museum, Toronto, Ontario. Hope to show that based on relations between heritages and new identities and diversity through it. And last year also, I was a summer resident at uh, Archibray, resident artist at Archibray Center. And it was time after pandemic and people said it's um, uh, it's about the time to new begin. And I really wanted to talk about hope and future. So the piece becomes a vessel for memories and intrigate collage that transfusing life into inanimate object. So each faces tells its own tale, etched with the laughter, I hope, joy, pain, and wisdom. Together, they become guardians and witness to the transformative power of art and documenting the vitality of the human experience. And I hope that it represents the interplay between past and present, I guess, and the forging connections between generations to uh, cultures. And it embarks on a profound journey of self-discovery. So also these pieces uh, now exhibited in the between horizons, I have created like a special version for that. And uh, I hope it reflects myself in a unique way and representing who I am. And uh, like, oops, I have lenses on the pieces, figures. 
because I hope that uh, through the lenses, I can view the world in diversity uh, perspectives. And then all the little parts, they can be gathered as a one, like a mosaic that we're seeing that little parts just together. First, it, it's not just the individual, but when, when they gathered, it becomes one and become uh, a one piece as a harmonized piece. So I just want to show those kind of ideal uh, fact through these uh, pieces. So I hope that every can, everyone can enjoy the pieces from the shows. So I was a bit, yeah bit faster but yeah these are kind of like showing the images that I present. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful, both of you. I really appreciated your your thoughtful presentations and just all the work you did to be in the exhibition. It's um we're trying to trying to make it easier for people to participate in shows and hopefully um, make it meaningful for all of for all of the artists because um, we appreciate that you are creating meaningful experiences for our visitors and that's really um, why we do this. So thanks. I would love for other people to ask questions if anyone has a question. We have great work and congratulations in the chat. Um, I was going to ask a little bit more about um my next question was about works for the show but you both already answered that question <laughs> so um i'll ask you what is next while we're waiting to see if anyone else has a question um ken ming what is what's next on your studio table what's next is kind of scary because i am trying to find a way to tell my narrative away from figurative work for a bit um yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> big challenge yeah yeah I found that I've been when I was teaching a workshop at Aramont that was a moment that I noticed that eight years ago I was starting this similar bodies of work and I've been developing my own pace in my own way but I still like starving for a new idea new ways of telling my own story so I'm gonna pause a little bit I told Jennifer about this but I actually said no this this takes a lot of courage but I said no to a lot of exhibitions and workshops for next year and then I wanted to focus on creating a new piece I think we all as an artist need this new drive that you know new chapters right it, I, I probably will talk about my own story I will still talk about you know what I see how the world goes you know what it is to be an artist but I think I am like I'm going to take this time to really explore different ways of speaking as an artist so that's my next goal but yeah let's see how this will go <laughs> I mean, I think that's wonderful. And my earlier question about, you know, how did you make this brave decision to be an artist? You're really making that brave decision every day. And I think it's really brave just to to wake up every morning and say, I'm going to add my artistic voice to the world and to make the decision to make a change or to really give yourself space is really important. Um, and speaking as a curator who invites people to shows, if you say no, I'm just going to ask you again next year. So, you know, all, all the artists out there, you don't have to worry about saying no if you need a break um, because all of all of those opportunities are going to, you know, keep being presented. So it's going to be fine. I have to say that, yeah, whenever I say no, I explained it why. And then everybody was so supportive. Yes, our, all the artists need that drive. All the artists need that explore time so they were all understandable I mean I said yes to two things because <laughs> I cannot just disappear um my husband was like nodding his head like yeah you will never say no but I did my best and I'm very excited about this new move what I can do and everybody should should you know should have this time I think 
-hmm. cannot just make same same similar thing over and over I mean not that that's wrong you know you always find different ways different depth on making you always find something new to it you know so we all do the right thing there's no such right wrong way I think making art so far that's what I figure just trying to get away of what your family or wood is difficult <laughs> yeah and it's it's a big a big leap of faith which is great how about you Junhee what's what's next for you in the uh, studio yeah. so this coming year it's gonna be my first year of being made a career as an artist so I'm going to be attend the another artist in residency at Northern Clay Center. It's a McKnight artist residency. It's only for the mid-career stage artist. So I'm really hoping for be there. So be ready for the all the props that I need to do it. Now I'm talking about uh, talking to someone at the center education manager there. Morgan and we're talking about the curriculum so that I can teach some classes while I'm there there so it's going to be a huge challenge for me and also I think I'm going to have a solo show uh the beginning of the year uh in New Mexico areas mm -hmm. so I'm kind of like hoping for that shows and yeah it's going to be a very busy to do all the props and everything. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. That's Thank all very you. exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for questions. I don't see any questions. People are, oh, Richard has a question. Yay, Richard, what's your question? Oh, we have to take you off mute. Hold on. There yeah. you go. Um, can you hear me? We can. Yep. Okay, well, this is to Kyung Kyung Yun, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I believe uh, we first met maybe it was twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen. You were at uh, Belger Art Studio, is that right in Kansas yeah. City? Yes. And um, I was very taken with your work. Uh, I mean, your your skill level is just phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank you. And, um, and we've known each other since then. We've intersected a couple of times at Archie Bray, whatnot. And um, there's always been a level, a little bit of political and social commentary in your work. So that's somewhere that we've had an intersection and a connection. And, um, you know, when you you talk about the future and your role as an artist, and I know, you know, from my own experience as an artist, that uh, walking the political social commentary line is difficult. It's commercially difficult. People don't want to wake up and have their morning coffee looking at a image of Trump or a mushroom cloud or, you know. And um, I'm wondering is, uh, you know, when you talk about the future, you seem a little hesitant. And I'm wondering if you're if you're grappling with issues that you might be wanting to express that are less personal and more along these lines of, of things that you see in the world outside of yourself. Can you comment on that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going through. <laughs> you knew it. You just like see through me, Richard, always. Like, well, we've known each other. Always. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows Richard Nakin is very known artist, very respected artist. And of course, I studied you, your work, you know, studying, and I still go to PBD Access Museum just to go see your teapot there, just to go sit and just look at it and just like who's in us. So thank you for coming for the talk today. But yeah, as an artist uh, who also have done this for like 18 years, it's a long time, but also short time, you know. Same thing, but I was noticed because I am doing a craft work that skill matters a lot. I mean, that's what I thought we we're doing. This is ceramics. There is certain skill, there's certain level that we have to follow it to complete the work. And, you know, we're doing very traditional thing, 
and then that's what I believed for us. I still is, but it's trying to do more, not, not necessarily, I want, I don't want to say more bigger or important, but when I want to get into like bigger capital A art scene, writing a grant, writing, like being in the museum exhibitions, my work was not read as serious. Mm. It was like they were telling me it's like I felt like I was hitting a wall. It's not talking about any more depth than just well-made uh, craft work. So one time I had this conversation with artist named Hong Hong and she's a paper maker. And then she told me once that I'm making work that breaks all the rules in my field. Some people don't agree with my work. Some do, but there's a story that I want to talk about. I mean, not necessarily her narrative was more important, more political related, but I wanted to try at least to break what I can do and see the bigger picture away from the craftsman perfection and um, see what I can do with the, the knowledge that I have about this medium. And I don't, I might not necessarily create an object, you know, I might start painting, I might start writing, I might start exploring a video or who knows, but I felt like you're right. Like I've, I've thought just, I practiced until now to, um, perfectionized not perfectionized but like study deeply into one medium mm. but I think uh, I want to try more maybe a break a little bit of rule to see what's beyond mm. and then maybe I'll come back but if I don't do it I'll never know that's how I see it that's how I feel it I mean Junie mentioned she's like mid-career artist but who decided who's mid-career who's master of what like who decided we all always every day exploring every day trying to find your own answer so for me it's just like little stepping away just stepping aside and just saying I know this one knowledge I think I did it enough more than 10 years mm -hmm. so what if mm -hmm. I explore in a different way that's what I'm seeing you know but I know in our field in ceramics field everybody will be like oh god <laughs> You know, the de-skilling, de-skilling Jason oh. is happening. People are not following oh. the rules. We all freak out. Oh. But why um, not? If I, if I could just add to what you said, artists never stop being students. I turned 75 a couple of weeks ago. I'm still at mid-career. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Richard. Yes, we're all, we hope, I hope we're all still learning all the time. Um, Junhee, do you want to add anything to that conversation? Um, I mean, I talk about myself a little bit ahead and I'm uh, like just a person who got so distracted by this, every new things around me. So I could go for uh, being a graphic designer for from the start until here, but so easily got distracted. And then sometimes it's uh, it's like I told you that just to um, try to do a new thing in your period of lifetime that could lead you into another uh, way of doing life, I guess. So like Kyungmin mentioned it, I totally agreed. And then I also feel that like ceramic field seems so slow and like don't know what's going on in there. Sometimes it's really hard to catch up or follow it. But I just thank God that I'm not distracted anymore. I'm standing in this field and keep doing what I'm what I really like to do is kind of like for me to uh, be prestige in this stage of life so cheer up young man we can do it <laughs> <laughs> yes and yes. 
Yes. And Karen just mentioned it on the chat that, yes, but I'm not talking about it. That speaking mm. of world events or political issues more important, you know, than talking about personal life. No, I am talking of my own view of the world view of political issues so i am not we are not talking here that one issue is better than the other no mm. we're just speaking about our own narrative how we see how we perceive the world as an artist mm. and i think it's very important as an artist to speak about what our time and era that we're living in looks like and what kind of story that we can talk as an individual as an artist mm. so no we're not talking about which one is more important and less important here Totally. Yeah, I agree. Well, this has been a lovely hour. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, over the next several weeks, we're going to have more Clay and Conversations, so please keep an eye on your, um, your inbox and on our Instagram and emails so that you can sign up for the next one. Junhee and Kenming, thank you so much for today and for making art for the world. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. All.